This video is about how to install Zubuntu 22.04 LTS Desktop Jammy Jellyfish into VirtualBox. My impressions of Zubuntu are my likes. It has a small footprint for resources. It manages smaller screen real estate very well. It's very configurable, especially the desktop, and it's great for older laptops. My dislikes is that it's not easy to figure out how to configure for novices that aren't comfortable with Linux. Two known issues on install may seem to hang up and not restart. Simply fix by pressing enter after waiting for a few minutes. And that's just on the first install. And the Firefox snap install is not currently able to open locally installed Zubuntu docs. Hopefully they'll get that fixed soon outcomes. After finishing this video, you should be able to download Zubuntu 22.04, configure a VirtualBox guest operating system to run Zubuntu, install Zubuntu 22.04 into VirtualBox, update Zubuntu 22.04, and install VirtualBox guest editions into Zubuntu 22.04. Also, hopefully you'll be able to install Zubuntu in an older laptop or a regular hardware machine with the information that you get from this video. Requirements on your host computer. You need administrative privileges, 64-bit 4-core processor, minimum of 6 gigabits of RAM. I recommend at least 8 gigabytes of RAM on the host computer. An internet connection, virtualization hardware support, and VirtualBox 6 Plus install. For the Zubuntu guest machine, two cores of a multi-core processor. You can probably get away with one core in a virtual install. Two gigabytes of RAM. Again, you could get away probably with one gigabyte of RAM on a virtual install. And 20 gigabytes of storage or hard drive space. Additional info. The next three slides contain additional sources of info a list of the software used in making this video, and a disclaimer. If you wish, you can stop this video to read the slides. Here I am at Zubuntu.org, and I'm about ready to get Zubuntu and download it. Come up here to the Get Zubuntu item. I have Download and System Requirements. So let me take a quick look at System Requirements. Okay, to install and use Zubuntu, you need an Intel or AMD 64-bit processor with at least one gigabyte of memory. You may need more if you have integrated graphics. And you need 8.6 gigabytes of free space on your hard disk minimum. But the recommended system resources are two gigabytes of memory and a 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor and 20 gigabytes of free space. Okay, that's the way I'm, we're going to install it today with the recommendation. I'm going to go back up here where it says get Zubuntu and download it. And latest LTS release 22.04, Jamie Jellyfish, long-term support. And now it's only for three years. It used to be for five years. And I'm going to download the 64-bit system. And there are mirror downloads here. Let me bring that up. And depending on where you're at, try and pick the closest mirror download. In my case, it would be United States. Click on United States. And I've got a number of choices here. And I'm going to choose Zubuntu 22.04 Desktop AMD 64 ISO because I'm not set up for torrent. Click on it, and that's where I want to install it, and just click Save. You may pick wherever you want to save your copy as, but you've got to keep track of it. And when it's fully downloaded, come back to this screen. So now there's zero seconds left, but it's not downloaded yet. You have to wait till that. So now that it's downloaded, ready to go on to the next step, which is to set up a virtual machine for Zubuntu. Here I am at the Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager, and I'm going to create a new virtual machine to install Zubuntu in. And we'll go up here where it says Group, New Machine, 
It asks for name and operating system. So I'm going to call it base Zubuntu 22.04. And it's going to be in the machine folder, which I've already set. Zubuntu slash Zubuntu 22.04. Type of operating system is Linux. And the version I'm going to leave as Ubuntu 64-bit. Because if I scroll down here, I won't see a Zubuntu, and that's the closest to what it is. Click Next. Recommended memory is 1024. We're going to give it a little bit more. 2048. And then I'm just going to click Next. Create a virtual hard disk. Create. And we're just going to accept the default VDI, virtual box disk image. Click Next. And dynamically allocated is a preferred way to formulate these virtual machines so you don't take as much storage that's not getting used. Click Next. And we're going to change this from 10 to 20. And then click Create. Now we're going to make some changes here. Go up here to General. Advanced. And one thing I like to do is let it use a clipboard for copy and paste between the two machines. Bi-directional. Drag and drop. Bi-directional. Click OK. And once we have guest editions installed, we should be able to do that. Let's take a look at system. Base memories, 2048 of RAM. Processor. We'll give it two because that's recommended. And I have a four-core processor on my host machine. And then we'll click OK for here. Click OK. Display. I like to give it as much memory as possible. And I'm going to give it all the way to 128. And I'm going to enable 3D acceleration. And I'll see if that will help out. Click OK. Go to storage. It's got CD here. We're going to click on that. That's empty. And then we're going to have to choose wherever we downloaded the Zubuntu ISO file. In my case, I've already got it here because I've been practicing a little bit. But wherever you've stored it, you would use Choose a Disk File and then go to wherever it's been stored. I chose Zubuntu 24.04 Desktop. Click OK. And so everything is set up to start the install. Now I'm going to install base Ubuntu 2204. I'll right click here and go down to start and click on normal start. I'll try and keep this centered here. And so you've got four choices here. Try or install Zubuntu, which is the one I'm going to choose. Zubuntu, if you've got a problem like with a NVIDIA graphic driver that you don't have downloaded yet. OEM install, like if you have an old laptop that you're putting it on and you're setting it up for a, maybe another person. Well, I guess it just went automatically to the uh, regular install without me having to click on it. But anyway, what I was saying was sometimes you want to set up an old laptop or something for someone else. And then when you do an OEM install, the first time they start it up, they'll go through the whole thing of asking for a username and password. We'll let this go and... Uh, when you have to make a decision, I'll bring the screen back. After about two minutes, if you're installing this on a uh, laptop or a hardware machine, you might want to try Zubuntu on the hardware machine first, just to see how it'll work out before doing the actual install. In my case, the language is English, so I just click on Install Zubuntu. And then there's a keyboard, English and English for me. And then continue. What apps would you like to install to start with? And I'm just going to pick a normal installation. Web browser, utilities, office software, games, and media players. Other options, download updates while installing Zubuntu. And I'm going to pick install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi. And click continue. Installation type, erase disk and install Zubuntu. 
and it gives you a warning. This will delete all your program, documents, etc., etc. Basically, that means it'll delete everything on your virtual hard disk that you've created, your 20 gigabyte hard disk. And so we're just going to take the default there and install now. And right here it says everything about what's going to happen. And continue. You get to pick where your time zone is. You could pick, oh, Australia, India. In my case, I'm going to pick around Ohio, U.S. And I think it'll probably come out with, whoops, Toronto. I'm in Canada now, but still Eastern time zone. So that's still okay. And click continue when you have the correct time zone. Then ask for your name. And you put your full name here and it will pick your first one. And uh, computer's name, base, zoo, Ubuntu 22.04. Mike, and then choose a password. If you're installing on a uh, laptop or something, make sure it's stronger than the one I have up here. Use a strong password for anything you're taking out of the house or that you can't totally control. And I like to require my password to log in. Continue. And in a while, it's going to do the install. And you can take a look at some of the uh, items here. Help and support. There's official documentation online. And you can actually click on this and it might bring up a, a screen and it might just screw up the video on how I'm trying to show a demonstration, depending on how your Wi-Fi is set up. Real-time support. And then there's a community around Zubuntu. They're going to ask for a little bit of support, both in funding and skill sets, if you can offer it. So for me, it's been about almost 18 minutes since I started the install. Could happen shorter or maybe even longer. Ready to restart now. Click on that. Now, one thing I noticed, there was a error message that popped up right after the restart. And the error message said, failed to log out or something like that. I didn't catch it fast enough. And there is a problem sometimes with installing Zubuntu that will hang up at this point. So I'm going to give it about two minutes here. And if nothing happens after two minutes, then I'm going to click Enter. So it's been about two minutes since I've hit the restart button. So I want to make sure that my mouse is inside the black screen in case I've been doing something else. Click on the mouse to make sure I'm there and then I'm going to hit enter. So it appears to be restarting. In the next section we'll update the software in Zubuntu. Okay, Zubuntu has restarted. In this section I'm going to update the software. I like to do this before I install VirtualBox Guest Editions. Ask for a password. Let's sign in. Of course, we've got the very small screen that we will have until we install guest editions. Go right here to the gray bird. Go to settings. And come down here where it says uh, software updater. And let that run. It says the software in this computer is up to date. Click OK. And one of the things I'm going to do here is I'm going to restart it, even though it's not necessary. Go back up here to the gray bird. And I'm going to log out and restart. After supposedly doing an update, I'm going to log back in to install guest editions here. Once I'm back in, I'm going to go to devices. And this is on the virtual box menu, not on the... Uh, so Ubuntu menu. I'm going to insert the guest edition CD image. So now the CD is mounted. And then I'm going to run this auto run SH. It asks you if you want to open with LibreOffice Writer or open with other applications. So basically I'm just going to have to run it from the terminal. I'm going to have to go over here where it says file. And then it says open terminal here because I want to be media, mic, box, wherever the CD-ROM is that we've inserted. And I'm going to 
enter the following command, sudo apt install gcc perl make dash y. There's a kernel issue with Ubuntu and Zubuntu, so you've got to install some additional software in order to run the VirtualBox guest editions. Now this can be run from anywhere, but when you want to run the uh, autorun.sh file, you're going to have to run it from wherever the media file is so it can find it. Now, sudo dot slash, it's autorun.sh, it's this file right here, autorun.sh, and that will get your VirtualBox guest editions installed. Now it says uh, running kernel modules will not be replaced until the system is restarted and return to close this window. Hit return. And then in my other window, I'm going to go sudo reboot and that will restart it. And when it comes back, we'll make it larger. So full window. Password. And now we're going to expand the window. Come down and just grab it from the corner. If I can grab it with those little arrows. There we almost. Now you can also go to view and adjust uh, window size or scale mode. But I just normally go like this. So I'll pull it out. So there we go. And that's it. Now, one other thing we kind of want to show you. I'm going to go over here to the Applications menu. And go to Settings. And you can make some settings here with a menu edi editor. One of the things you'll notice is Accessories and Games. Maybe you want to be a developer and see what kind of software is on. Uh, but I'll open up the menu editor. And right here you see development, accessories development, and Python 3.10. It says hide from menus, so but we're going to make it visible to the menus. And so once that's done, we'll just close this. You want to save changes? Yes, save changes. And this time we open it up. We got accessories and then development, and there's Python 3.10. Now, one thing you can do with Ubuntu, if you don't like this kind of wallpaper, you can right click, go to your desktop settings, and you can pick a new wallpaper. Let me go with this one and close. There are some other settings there for you that you can play solid color, backdrops, so on. It's actually easier to do than in uh, regular Ubuntu. Thank you for watching this video and hope you have a good time with Ubuntu.